Hello, everyone. First of all, can you hear me from the back? Great. All right, let's get started. So very glad to be here. And uh, the presentation of my talk is Cloud Native Geospatial An uh, Analytics with GeoParque and Apache uh, Sedona. And uh, a little bit more about me and the Veribus. So Veribus is the spatial intelligence cloud. So at Veribus, we are de uh, developing the first ever cloud native data warehouses for geospatial data. And uh, I'm a co-founder of Veribus, and uh, I'm also the VP and PMC chair of Apache Sedona, which is a project under the Apache Software Foundation. And uh, I was a tenure track assistant professor of computer science at Washington State University. And uh, in the past decade, so my research has been focusing on distributed geospatial databases. And uh, I have publications on top database conferences like Sigma VLDB ICD, and I'm also program committee members of these conferences, meaning that I'm still reviewing papers for, for these conferences. Cool. Now, let's talk about geospatial data. And I'm sure everybody here in this room have been using geospatial data, or at least heard of geospatial data, right? So geospatial data could come from many different data sources, including telemetry data, real network data, satellite imagery, uh, mapping services, residential maps, so many different data sources. And uh, given that, in the past decade, so the actual the amount of available ge geospatial data has increased tremendously. For example, as of today, we have over 5 billion mobile devices all around the world. All these devices, they keep generating uh, geospatial data on a daily basis. We also have lots of real network data. So for example, OpenStreetMap, the most popular open source real, net, real network data service, it generates over one terabyte real network data. Most importantly, this data get updated on a daily basis. Also, satellite data. According to NASA, they have released over 22 petabyte satellite imagery data. And uh, as you know, so we have satellites running 24-7 and monitor the status of the planet, right? You get super huge amount of data to, to process. So now given uh, the amount of available geospatial data, so we really need very efficient tools to help us to make sense and analyze all this geospatial data. And the existing tool cannot solve this problem. So here comes a Sedona. So a Sedona is an open source cluster computing engine for processing large-scale geospatial data. And uh, so Sedona, as I mentioned, is a project in Apache Software Foundation. So our website is sedona.apache.org. We also have GitHub, so it is also under the Apache Software Foundation. We also have our LinkedIn account and the Twitter account. So if you are interested, you can follow us on this social media and get the latest news. All right, a quick report about the status of Sedona. So on your right-hand side, you can see there are many companies that are actually using Sedona in production. So I won't repeat their, their names. As you can see, there are many logos there, right? So Sedona is a research project I started in 2015, and it became mature in 2017, and it joined the Apache Software Foundation in 2020. And right now, it has more than 10,000 corporate users. As you see, there are many companies there. And on GitHub, it has over 120 contributors. And it has actually 1.9 thousand stars, actually, at the moment on GitHub. And it has over 2 million downloads last month. Overall, its, uh, its downloads have exceeded 38 million. So many people are using Sedona in production. And Sedona is actually ranked among top 0.3% most downloaded package on PyPy. So it is a very, very popular uh, open source software. Cool, there are many applications of Sedona. So I will just pick a few of them. So first of all, here is an application from our user IAG. So IAG is an insurance company in New Zealand area. So they use Sedona to analyze their, uh, their insurance data. So in particular, they have lots of GPS devices from vehicles. They want to know so which area and routes are more prone to disasters. So given that, they will use it to adjust their insurance premium, right? So for those areas that are very easy to get this kind of disaster, they're gonna have a higher premium. So Amazon, in particular, Amazon last mile delivery team is also using Sedona for their 
uh, data, spatial data ETL and uh, analytics tasks. In particular, the last mile delivery team, they want to have very, uh, they, they collect geospatial data from many different data sources and initially they are in very dirty format. They want to integrate all that to a, to a real network that can have better, uh, that can have better uh, description of their, uh, of their residential addresses. So their last mile delivery drivers will be able to find uh, the most accurate locations and routes. So this data get updated on, on, on daily basis. So they use a donor to facilitate this process. And uh, T-Mobile, they use a donor to analyze their uh, the serial tower and the mobile device signals and to figure, to figure out the population density uh, around different area. And the Mercedes-Benz, so th their case is kind of similar to the IAG case. So they use a donor to analyze their, their traffic data from vehicle and figure out so which area is more, uh, more likely to have more car accidents, right? Cool, so that's applications. So here is a quick overview about the Sedona system architecture. So the overview at diagram is on, on the right. So in particular, Sedona has a couple of layers. So the layer on the top is called a spatial query processing layer. So it offers, first of all, in terms of programming languages, it offers spatial SQL interface, Python interface, Scala and Java interface. It also has R interface as well. So in this layer, Sedona equips with a bunch of distributed spatial query algorithms that can take spatial query workload and distribute that to a number of machines in the cluster. It also has a spatial query optimizer that can decide which algorithm is the best one for this particular query workload. The second layer is the distributed spatial dataset layer. So this layer in particular focuses on how to organize data efficiently in a computer cluster. It has some techniques like distributed spatial data partitioning, how to partition data across different machines, and the distributed spatial indexing, how to index data in the cluster, as well as data serializer to improve data performance for uh, network I.O. And uh, Sedona can run on top of a number of dif different uh, distributed database engine, for example, Apache Spark for batch data processing, Apache Flink for stream data processing, as well as Snowflake. And by far, our support on Apache Spark is the most comprehensive, comprehensive one and also has the best performance. Uh, by the way, so we also recently released an O'Reilly book talk about how to use Apache Sedona. And we just released the preview version of this one. It has the first three chapters. So if you guys are interested, you can uh, download the book and uh, it is free. Cool. Now let's talk about how Sedona process geospatial data internally. In particular, Sedona supports two types of geospatial data, vector data and raster data. So in this presentation, I'm gonna focus on only vector data. So let's see an example in Sedona. So let's see how can we use spatial SQL in Sedona to manipulate geospatial data, geospatial vector data in particular. So here is an example. So we have a taxi trip record table as you see, each record is, uh, is the information of a taxi trip, including the pickup point, drop off point, and the trip fare of a particular trip record. And on the other hand, I also have a polygon that is the polygon shape of the Manhattan region. The question I want to ask is, so what are the trips started in Manhattan? So in this query, I want, I want the query to return the records that are within this red color rectangle. If you want to describe this in spatial SQL, it's gonna be something like this. So if you guys are familiar with SQL, so this is very similar to the standard SQL query language. And in particular, in the where clause, we use a special predicate called ST contains. ST contains take two parameters. So first one is the, is the polygon shape of, of Manhattan. And on the other hand, the second parameter is the pickup point of that, uh, that column. So I don't know if you'll be able to figure out uh, and do the query for you. Now let's see a more challenging query. Suppose we have two tables. One table is the city table, another table is the driver table. City table contains the polygon boundary of each city. The driver table contains the location of each driver. Now 
the question I want to ask is, can you tell me the drivers in each city? So this is actually called a spatial drawing query. To do that, you can still use ST contains in spatial SQL. However, now in the parameter section, you're gonna put two parameters. The first parameter is not just a polygon shape, it is the column of the cities. And uh, the second parameter is the, uh, is the location of the drivers. So this way, I don't know if you recognize this one as something called spatial drawing query. It will do the query for you and return the query efficiently. So a question for the audience is, so what is the time complexity of this one? So if you, if you guys took computer science class before, so this by nature is a, a n square complexity and this is prohibitively expensive in a distributed system. But Sedona has lots of techniques to make this run very efficiently in a computer cluster. <coughs> Gonna skip this one really quick. Now, the second part of my presentation is actually about geospatial data format, cloud native geospatial data formats, and how Sedona process that particular format and the speed up the queries. In particular, I'm gonna talk about three formats, Geoparquet, Parquet Geometry, and Iceberg Geometry. All these formats, they are related to something called Parquet Format. So first of all, how many of you here in this room are familiar with Parquet Format? Good, so there are some people know it. So just do a quick recap on what Parquet Format is. So Parquet, Parquet is a cloud-native, so-called cloud-native uh, file format. It is column oriented and it has very efficient storage for data encoding and compression. And also it has data chunking that can actually chunk data ba based on rows. So imagine there you have a table on the right, right? So this is the table you, you, you imagine as, as a logical table. When Parquet store it, it actually store the all, all the data out of the, the same column together, like this one. So all the value of the ID column is stayed together all the value of the name column stay together. So this will give you lots of opportunity for better compression encoding. So GeoParquet is about how to encode the geospatial data in, uh, in Apache Parquet, right? So, so the goal of the GeoParquet format is it want to first of all leverage the columnar format for sure. And most importantly, it want to enable interoperability among different cloud data warehouses. So let me skip this one. So in particular, the gist of GeoParquet is, it first of all tells you how should you encode geospatial data in the Parquet format. In short, it uses something called WKB format. Maybe some of you are familiar with WKB format. And secondly, it also says that in the column metadata, you should also provide necessary information for the uh, encoding of the CRS and also the tell, tells us how to encode the geometry and the, the geometry types as well. So this is about WKB, let me skip this. Cool. Now let's see how Sedona, Sedona perf, uh, do something called spatial query on GeoParquet. Still, let's imagine we use the exact same query we just mentioned before, the ST contains query. We want to find the records that are within that are within this red color rectangle. So when Sedona actually execute this query on top of GeoParquet, it will do something called filter pushdown. This filter pushdown is a technique that actually leverage the statistics stored in the Parquet format and the GeoParquet format in particular. In particular, so each GeoParquet file metadata has something called a B box, something like this one, right? As you can see here, so each dash the rectangle is the is the shape of the uh, is the shape of that that uh, B box. So I don't know if you figure out so the, if this polygon uh, polygon shape of Manhattan intersect with any of this B box column. So if it is, it will fetch a record. Otherwise, it will skip this entire file. So Sedona also will be able to partition data efficiently based on the spatial proximity to uh, to speed up the data filtering. And here is a quick overview about the performance. So by using, by using GeoParquet, Sedona will be able to finish the spatial query in three minutes. In the past, if you use regular Parquet files, this will take about 1.5 hours. All this was done on a 
on the uh, on, oops, on MacBook Pro laptop, which is this laptop exactly. Cool. So yeah, so this is the uh, yeah, this is about it. So any question? Please. It on. Yeah. Um, thanks for your talk. That was interesting. I'm curious to learn. Um, you know, we've got other tools to accomplish similar things like PostJS. Where, in your experience, have you seen the breakdown of workloads or data volumes that makes Spark or uh, Sedona Sedona a better choice of tool than something like a PostJS? Yeah, this is a great question. So, in particular, see uh, this gentleman asked that. So, there is another great tool called PostJS, right? So, which is focused on transactional spatial. Uh, uh, analysis, a uh, special special queries. So, and he asked which, uh, what is the right size to choose PostGIS and uh, between PostGIS and and Apache Sedona and Spark. So I would say, so if your queries mostly, first of all, in terms of query query type, right? If your queries most focus on analytics query, for example, special join, special join, uh, special aggregation. For this kind of query, Sedona usually is a better choice since it easily leverages multiple CPU cores even on a single machine, right? But if your query workload is mostly focused on transactions, for example, insertion, deletion, update, for this kind of query workload, so you will be using PostGIS. And uh, for other type of query, usually Sedona is good at something like beyond, I would say, 10 to 20 gig, in particular if it comes to uh, spatial join. So I don't know, does a very good job on special join two, two big data set together. Thank you. Anyone else? Yeah, right. Thank you for that presentation. Um, I'm very curious how you're thinking about storing your provenance metadata, like you're processing metadata so that someone could look at this and say, oh, I know exactly what happened here. Uh, like when you get your data from your source to your ingest everything, how are you storing that kind of process flow so someone could look at it who doesn't necessarily know the technical details but understand the transformations that took place? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so what this gentleman asked is that, so Sedona as a processing engine, it ingests data, process data, right? So if there is a way that you can see this, how this entire process looks like uh, so people better understand what happened behind the scene. So, yeah, so in Sedona, so we have a function that actually can help, can print the entire thing called a query plan. So very similar to what PostGIS provides. So basically, say you have very complicated uh, spatial SQL queries. So our query plan will be able to give you the entire, like the actual query plan that how, the, how, how Sedona actually ingests data, how it processes data, and what is the other operators uh, used in this in this uh, in this particular query.